It's the Southern Rock Anthem created almost 50 years ago by a band that got its humble start in this West Side home. The Skinnerd fans are dedicated. Gene Odom ran security for Leonard Skinnerd and was a childhood friend of band leader Ronnie Van Zant. We'd run across this roof and jump on those uh, the uh, bamboos and ride the bamboos to the ground because we were kids, you know. Odom often gives tours of the Van Zandt house, now an Airbnb, where brothers Ronnie, Donnie, and Johnny grew up. People come from around the world. Andy Brown and Allison Haddad, all decked out in their Leonard Skinner t-shirts, traveled all the way from Britain to stay here. We've learned lots. Lots of, there's lots of, lots of small facts. Yes. That, that extra. Um, extra things mm -hmm. that, um, that I didn't know. Leonard Skinner made its mark on Britain back in 1976. They opened for the Rolling Stones at the Kenworth Festival. The Stones had one rule, do not go down the tongue ramp. That's exactly what Skinner did as Ronnie Van Zant led Gary Rosington and Alan Collins right down the ramp. There's a poster of that festival on the wall of the Van Zant house along with other memorabilia. The house was purchased back in 2015 by real estate investor Todd Smith. It was quite a mess. Smith slowly renovated the house and a few years ago got the state of Florida to approve this historical marker. It's uh, quite a draw. I mean, you, you come here for any length of time and, and you stay here and you'll probably get, you know, two or three people every day that stop by and take pictures and uh, in front of the sign. The marker tells of the band's history. It makes reference to the tragic plane crash in 1977 that killed Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, and background vocalist Cassie Gaines after the plane ran out of fuel. Odom was on that plane and says he was the last one to talk to Ronnie Van Zant. If he hadn't unsnapped his seatbelt, he'd probably still be alive. More than 20 years ago, Ronnie Van Zant's mausoleum was vandalized at the Jacksonville Memory Gardens. His family decided to move his remains here at the Riverside Memorial Park, just a couple of miles away from the Van Zant house. But then we found his remains were moved again just this past Christmas to another section of the cemetery right here, a private estate his wife purchased right in front of this fountain. Skinnerd fans still visit the cemetery to memorialize the rock legend while also checking out his childhood home. In fact, diehards had the chance to own a piece of the Van Zandt house last year in an equity crowd fund. But Smith says he canceled the project and instead is now focusing on a Kickstarter project to raise money for landscaping. So we want to you know, get a, a nice sprinkler system in here and resod and, and put a, a real driveway in and, and some nice landscaping and really kind of spruce up the, the curb appeal. Many Skinnerd fans are in their 60s and 70s now, but younger people are being exposed to the music every day. And just like the Van Zandt house, it's preserved for future generations. That music kind of lives on forever. I don't think it's pretty ageless. By the way, Todd Smith's Kickstarter campaign just launched on Wednesday. Donors can contribute toward the cost to landscape the front of the Van Zandt house. The campaign runs through April 17th. We have a link on actionnewsjacks.com if you'd like to donate. In the studio, Phil Amato, Action News Jacks.